farmer killed in Portland. Portland murders have moved to 10 with the death of 46-year-old farmer Wayne Wilson, also called Bubba, of Windsor Forest District. Wilson left home for his farm located at Mountain in Windsor Forest, Portland, yesterday morning and was expected to return home, but he did not. Investigations revealed that he was last seen at 1 p.m. An alarm was made and a search was in process when his body was discovered in bushes late yesterday evening. It had several chop wounds and was wrapped in a tarpaulin under a tree. The Portland CIB is investigating and is asking anyone with information on this matter or any other crime to contact the Portland Police at 876-322-9263 or 876-322-9368-119 or the nearest police station. Third suspect nabbed for murder of 63-year-old Manchester woman. The Manchester Police have made another arrest in connection with Thursday's stabbing death of 63-year-old Manchester businesswoman Marcia Chinyu at her home in Ingleside in Mandeville. Head of the Manchester Police, Superintendent Gary Francis, said late last night that a woman was taken into police custody. Two men were also arrested yesterday in connection with the murder. Francis said that an intensive investigation resulted in the arrest of the three people and is confident that charges will be laid soon. I am confident that charges will be laid soon as we continue our investigations. I want to reassure the citizens of Mandeville that the police is committed to ensuring their safety and will spare no resources in making certain that perpetrators of crimes within the parish are brought to justice, he said. Chinu's body was found in her car on her Ingleside closed driveway about 8.30 p.m. on Thursday. Francis has continued his appeal for anyone with information on crimes committed to contact the police. Watchman shot dead in St. Thomas. A man was fatally shot on Wednesday evening in St. Thomas. He has been identified as 28-year-old Davion Spence, a watchman of Seaview Drive in Licence, St. Thomas. About 7.30 p.m. residents heard explosions. Spence was later found with bullet wounds at a block-making factory where he was employed as the watchman. 26 people have been killed in St. Thomas since the start of the year. Meanwhile, over in Negril, three persons were shot, two fatally, in separate incidents in Negril, Westmoreland, on Wednesday night. The deceased have been identified as 25-year-old call centre worker Camille Davidson from Mandeville, Manchester, and 40-year-old Odane Beckford of Darleston, Westmoreland. Davidson and her boyfriend were ambushed on the Namperil Road about 8.30. The man, who recounted the incident, said he does not know why they were attacked. In the second incident, Beckford was shot in the head at his house in West End. About 9.20, a resident noticed Beckford's front door on fire. Shortly after, Beckford emerged from the house and was shot. He later died. JUTC worker dies in crash at Portmore Depot. An employee of the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, Depot in Portmore, St. Catherine, was killed Thursday night in a crash on the compound. He has been identified as 41-year-old Ron Robinson. Robinson was employed to the JUTC for six years as a bus cleaner. JUTC Corporate Communications Manager, Sasa Toms, said that the mishap occurred shortly after 10 o'clock. He said Robinson was in the process of washing a bus when he attempted to move the vehicle to another area and crashed into a column and two other buses. At the sound of the impact, other staff members came to the scene and found him slumped over the steering wheel and unresponsive. He was later pronounced dead. Tom said the bus cleaners are not allowed to operate the buses. One death, 69 new COVID-19 cases. A 58-year-old woman from Clarendon has died from the coronavirus in Jamaica, as the island recorded 69 new cases of the virus in the last 24 hours. The Ministry of Health and Wellness said the woman's death was previously under investigation. This brings the country's death toll to 251. The new cases comprise 35 males and 34 females, with ages ranging from 2 years to 86 years. These cases have pushed the country's tally to 10,669, of which 4,315 are active. Of the new cases, 
15 are from Westmoreland, 13 are from Kingston and St. Andrew, 12 are from St. Catherine, 9 are from St. James, 7 are from Trelawney, 5 are from St. Mary, 2 each are from Clarendon and Portland, and 1 each are from Manchester, St. Anne, St. Elizabeth and St. Thomas. The ministry said two of the new cases are local transmissions, two are contacts of confirmed cases, and the other 65 are under investigation. Meanwhile, another death was reported as coincidental, while one was reported under investigation. 109 schools passed Health Ministry inspection. More than 100 schools across Jamaica have been inspected and given a passing grade by the Ministry of Health. Education Minister Favel Williams said the inspections are part of the assessment for the phased reopening of schools in 2021. However, Williams noted that the Health Ministry's green light does not mean that the Education Ministry is ready to proceed with the opening of these schools. We have 109 schools that have been inspected and rated satisfactory. And so we are looking at that list, speaking with the principals, because what we also found during those two weeks is that it takes time for the schools to get back online, she pointed out. Williams said despite the fact that teachers and the support staff are still working at schools, many educators who are working from home will have to make preparations for their children. You have to get the word out to parents. Parents themselves have to get prepared. Teachers who are at home and teaching from home using the online system. Some have their children with them and they would have to seek help and support for those children. So, it is a significant logistics job that requires some time. So, it isn't as if we can just get up and say to the 109 schools, come back in. So, we are in touch with the principals to work out how we continue to bring schools back face-to-face, -face, she insisted. The education minister was speaking at a post-cabinet media briefing on Wednesday. The ministry last week completed a two-week trial of face-to-face -face classes in 17 schools. Williams reported that the schools performed well in most categories of assessment, but there are weaknesses in the preparedness to deal with emergency cases. Senate approves postponement of local government elections. The postponement of the local government elections has been sanctioned by the members of the Senate. Government and opposition senators have approved amendments to temporarily modify the Representation of the People Act, ROPA, to allow the local government elections to be pushed back to a date no later than February 27, 2022. Piloting the bill in the Upper House during its sitting yesterday, Leader of Government Business in the Senate, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, said the decision was made to not hold the election at this time due to the impact of the coronavirus, COVID-19, on the Jamaican society and the economy. Specifically, she noted that delaying the election is necessary given the increased risk of exposure by the Jamaican electorate to COVID-19 and current financial constraints coupled with the increased demand for resources to respond not only to our health and safety needs but also to the recent flood rains that affected Jamaica. Johnson Smith, who is also Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, pointed out that the local government elections for members to serve on the respective councils of the municipal corporations and the mayors of city municipalities is due by November 29, 2020. The eighth schedule of the ROPA provides for a period of extension, which is 90 days, commencing on the day after the fourth anniversary of the date on which the most recent election was held. This would allow for the next local government elections to be held no later than February 2021, where no action taken for postponement, she said. Slated to be held every four years, the election was last conducted on November 28, 2016. The bill to postpone the election was passed without amendments in the House of Representatives on November 24. It will now go to Governor General Sir Patrick Allen for his signature, after which it will become law. No grand market for Mobe, says Mayor. The annual Montego Bay Christmas Grand Market, one of the city's stellar attractions at Christmas, will not be staged this year as the St. James Municipal Corporation tries to blunt the spread of the coronavirus in the Western Parish. The vendors have been asking about the Grand Market, but I'm not going to accommodate that because that is going to have people gathering all over the place, Montego Bay Mayor Leroy Williams said 
during a Ministry of Health and Wellness COVID-19 briefing on Thursday. The vendors are concerned because we are going towards the festive season. But frankly, as the mayor, I have a problem with the anticipated crowd we will have. I'm trying desperately to get the vendors off the main street because that is where most of them congregate, added Williams. Grand Market is customarily held in all major towns across the island on Christmas Eve, with shoppers turning out in large numbers in the late evening. The colorful and energetic affair is characterized by heavy spending as it provides the opportunity for shoppers to make last-minute Christmas purchases or secure unique items that have not been available all year round. In addition to the shelving of the Grand Market, Williams is also calling on residents of St. James to be responsible and decline invitations for Christmas parties. You can party, yes, but you'll probably run the risk of having your last Christmas, whereas if you forego the partying, you'll be able to see several other Christmases, said Williams. So I personally want to appeal to the citizens in and around Montego Bay to make sure that they observe the safety protocols and to mask up before you talk up. Mask up before you talk up is the slogan for Ministry of Health and Wellness public education campaign to encourage mask wearing as a protective measure to mitigate the spread of the virus.